In this problem, we're given a single function, h of x, and we're asked four different problems. The first one is h of 4 simply means to replace our input variable x with 4. So what you see me doing here is writing down the function h of x, replace x with 4. That gives me the question. The question is to find h of 4. Then you simply replace all the other input variables with 4. This technique just basically writes the variable as a set of parentheses to remind students that oftentimes parentheses are necessary. Then simplifying gives 4 squared is 16, and 2 times 4 is 8, and then you have the subtract 4 at the end. 8 minus 4 is 4, then add the 16, you'll get 20. So the question is to find h of 4, the answer was simply 20. This simply means if you plug 4 in as an input into the function h, the output is 20. So this next part right here is h of minus 3x. I could find h of minus 3x much the same as I found h of 4, simply replacing all the input variables with a set of parentheses and a blank space, and then saying, well, if I want the question h of minus 3x, I have to put a minus 3x here. Now I've invoked the question. Then I just proceed to put minus 3x in all of the parentheses. But notice that if you didn't put the parentheses here, had I just taken x and wrote minus 3x and simply replaced x with minus 3x and then wrote the squared symbol, I would not get the correct answer that I see here. And the reason being is here the minus 3 is not being squared and here it is. And in fact, it actually should be being squared. So this is wrong. So I tell my students, whenever you make a substitution in math, put parentheses. Half the time you won't need it, but half the time you will. But notice we're going to get a new function. We're not keeping the function the same and evaluating it as a number. This is a completely different kind of problem. Our intent is to get a whole new equation. I'm just going to simplify out the equation. We already have it here. The negative 3 is being squared, which is basically negative 3 times negative 3, or 9 x is being squared, 2 times negative 3x is minus 6x, and then we have the subtract 4, and there's nothing that really can be simplified. You found an entire new function. This new function is different from the old, and the new function was obtained by taking the old function and doing a variable swap. Wherever we see the variable x, we replaced x with parentheses minus 3x. Wherever you see x, replace it with parentheses minus 3x, and it's exactly what I'm going to do in the next part, except I'm going to replace it with a minus 1. So if I was to replace a minus 1 in the parentheses, I'd get the question h of a minus 1, and as before, I would just write a minus 1 in all of the parentheses and simplify. So the only thing new here is the simplification involves a squaring of a binomial. If you don't know the shortcut, and let me just do it real quick, a gets squared, and then also, there's a middle term. It turns out that you have to multiply these two quantities, a and negative 1. If you multiply, you get negative a. Double that, get negative 2a. So you multiply the two quantities in the binomial, and double is the shortcut. And then the last thing gets squared. If you took negative 1 and squared it, negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. If you were to practice that, you'd probably save yourself a bit of time. But let me show you how it really should be explained if you've never seen what that symbolism means before a minus 1 squared, in fact anything being squared, means to multiply by itself. And when you see it this way, you probably remember to FOIL. And FOIL means to multiply the first terms, a times a is a squared. Do the outside terms, a times negative 1 is negative a. Remember how I taught you the shortcut to multiply the two terms? That's because of this. a times negative 1 is negative a. But because squaring a binomial, you get another copy of that, another negative 1 times a. So you end up getting two negative a's, and that's why I had you double it after multiplication. So negative a minus a is negative 2a. Then finally, negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. And then finally, you'd simplify this down to get the same thing I got when I did the shortcut. So it's up to you whether you want to practice that shortcut with different problems, but I need to proceed to simplify. So here I'm distributing the 2. You have 2 times a, and then you have 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, and you have a subtract 4, and you do need to combine like terms at the end. h of a minus 1 is all this. Here I have an a squared. It's the only term being squared. I have a minus 2a and a plus 2a, which gives me 0. So you could write plus 0, but we don't usually write the additive identity. Then we have a 1 and then subtract 2 is negative 1, and then if you were to subtract 4, you would get negative 5. So I get that this new function, h of a minus 1, simplifies out to be a squared minus 5. And the last problem here, it really is two problems in one. They're making use of the function h of x twice. So if you just solved this piece and ignored that, what would that be? Well, it would be the same as doing the other problems. I would replace the input variable with x plus 1, 
and that would give me h of x plus 1 and I'm going to write it down in unsimplified form at first and then I'll do the second step down there so all of this is h of x plus 1 where you see this it can be replaced with all of this here I'm going to think of it as I'm going to be finding 3 times h of x and then I'm going to subtract these two quantities so what would 3 times h of x be? Well, they gave me h of x to be x squared plus 2x minus 4. So you could simply say that h of x is x squared plus 2x minus 4. So here's me just copying h of x. The problem is that you might be tempted to just put a 3 there now. And that is not correct at all. What you've done is you haven't multiplied the function h of x by 3. You've only multiplied the first term of h of x by 3. It turns out you have to multiply all the terms. 3 times h of x means multiply everything in h of x by 3. Each term must be multiplied by 3. But since I'm writing this out, what you could do is just use parentheses here. And I always tell my students when you make a substitution, put parentheses around what you're substituting. This would be an example. All right, so that was a lot uh, to say, just to simply say when you multiply h by 3, make sure you do it to all terms, and that would give you 3x squared. Then you multiply the 3 in a distributive property, you'd get 6x and then 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. So if you want, this quantity is what 3 times h of x is. So the idea is I have the two pieces in the question. We found h of x plus 1, that was all of this. We found 3 times h of x, that was this. Now it's saying take the two things and subtract them. But let me just copy down, without simplifying, what h of x plus 1 was. But just copy that down and then 3 times h of x was this. It was 3x squared plus 6x minus 12. If you just put a subtract here now, what you've done is you didn't really subtract 3 times h of x. You've only subtracted the first term of 3 times h of x. Here is the part where you need parentheses. But whenever you subtract something and it has more than one term, then you must distribute that sign through each term. A term is anything being separated by an addition or subtraction symbol. But let me work on this off to the side because I'm going to run a room. Again, if you know the shortcut, x gets squared and 1 gets squared, and the common mistake is to leave that. But it turns out that there's a middle term that you can get by multiplying these two terms and doubling. 1 times x is x. If you double that, you get 2x. If you take x plus 1 squared, write down what it means. It means to multiply it by itself. And then you probably were taught to FOIL. And so x times x is x squared. Here's the part where you get x times 1, and that's what motivated that shortcut of multiplying the two things together. The fact that you're going to get another copy of it is why I told you to double the result after we multiplied. 1 times x is x, double it to get 2x, and that's where you get the 2x from right here. And then finally in the foiling process you have 1 times 1 is 1. So if you work it out the long way, you get x squared plus 2x plus 1. So anyway, there it is. If you distribute the 2, you'd get 2x. Also distribute the 2 to the 1, so that would give you 2 times 1 is 2. We have the minus 4 there, and this negative out here basically changes all the signs on the inside function here. You can think of it as you're multiplying through by a negative 1 if you want, and that would change the signs. You have minus 3x squared, minus 6x plus 12. Almost done. It's kind of a long problem. Now we need to combine like terms. We have x squared and minus 3x squared gives negative 2x squared. So those are the squared terms. And then if you want to look at all the terms that involve x, you have 2x and you have another 2x, that's 4x. And then if you take 4x and subtract 6x, then you would get minus 2x. And then finally, if you just look at the constants, you have the number 1 here. Add it to 2, you get 3. Subtract 4, you get a, a negative 1. And then finally, if you took that negative 1 and added it to 12, you would get 11. So my final result here is, what would you get if you changed the function h of x to h of x plus 1, and then after that, subtracted 3 times h of x? So don't forget where this function came from. That's just the set of directions that tells you where it came from. It would be equal to this.